Hello, this is Christopher Aaron. How are you? This is March 25th, 2021, and we have a an interesting update to do today on the precious metals markets. Now, I know some of you prefer to hear me rant about the Federal Reserve or the problems within the banking system, uh, which there are plenty. Um, remember, however, that simultaneously with those beliefs that I have, I'm also an optimist about humanity in general. Um, I think there are problems within the system that are attempting to uh, slow us down, if you will. But I think over the long run, us as humans, we are on an upward and outward trajectory and that we are moving uh, toward the stars, literally and figuratively speaking. So this is not a doom and, do and, doom and gloom channel. Uh, but this is a realistic channel where we look at the investment case for moving the currency, at least towards something that is more tangibly backed. That is one of our central uh, components to our main thesis, our investment thesis. So all of those things are true. And sometimes, though, we are just going to get into the nitty gritty of technical analysis, which is what I prefer to focus on when choosing and evaluating the markets. And so today we're going to do, to do that. This is going to be a very technically focused video for you, specifically covering the gold and silver mining sector. And of course, if you're investing in the physical metals, you should pay attention to this because the mining sector often leads the price of the metals at certain junctures. So it can give you clues as to what is actually going to happen to the prices of the metals themselves. So let's get into this more technically focused video this week. Make sure to hit the big red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when these videos come out. Thank you very much. So we are going to focus on one signal and one signal only in this video. We are going to focus on the chart of Wheaton Precious Metals. First, I'm going to explain to you why, what Wheaton Precious Metals is all about. Then we're going to do the analysis and then talk about what that might mean for the rest of the gold and silver mining sector and then the prices of the metals themselves. So just to let you know, if you're new to studying charts like this, what are we looking at? In the middle here is the price of Wheaton Precious Metals itself. What is Wheaton Precious Metals? It is a gold and silver streaming company. There are a few, there are about a handful of these companies that exist in the world. Wheaton Precious Metals is, for, uh, for all practical purposes, the or at least one of the top three uh, precious metals streaming companies in the world. So what a streaming company does, which is different from a regular mining company, which sticks drills into the ground and shovels and tries to find and extract actual gold and silver. What a streaming company does is to issue loans to mining companies, and they therefore help to finance the development of the mining company's deposits. Um, and in exchange for the funds that Wheaton Precious Metals or any of the other metal streamers, in exchange for the funds that they give to the mining companies, these streamers receive a set amount of gold and silver, physical metal, in the future when the mining company actually successfully extracts that gold or silver from the ground. Uh, so because these streaming companies have fixed input costs, generally speaking, the amount of money that they're loaning to the mining companies, but their output costs or their revenue is quite variable, meaning the price of the metals that they receive varies over time, these companies are quite leveraged to the prices of the metals themselves. And furthermore, the valuation of these companies often tends to reflect expectations in the metals that is coming up into the future. Um, don't ask me how the market is able to do this, but generally speaking, the market for the streaming companies gives you clues as to what is actually going to happen to the prices of the metals 
themselves. It is almost a forward-looking type of investment vehicle. It's not perfect, no signal is, but it's uh, quite important to pay attention to, I will say, at the very least. So here we are looking at wheat and precious metals. This is the chart of wheat and precious metals going back for the last year or so. At the top, we're looking at a momentum indicator, oversold, uh, overbought, oversold. This is just momentum. Down here, we're looking at the volume, the number of shares that have traded for this particular stock. And down here, we're looking at relative strength. This is wheat and precious metals versus the HUI uh, mining index. So we're just looking at how is this one stock comparing to the rest of the mining sector. So when we're looking at wheat and precious metals, if you understand why we're looking at this, we are, we are studying wheat and precious metals for its ability to give us clues as to the prices of the metals themselves. That's what we're doing. If you understand that, now let's start to annotate and analyze WPM itself. First of all, what do we see here? Is a very clear horizontal black support level in this 37 to uh, 38 range right here. So you can see support right here last April, support again last June, support last November, support in January. And what did we see here? A little break just recently below this year-long support level. So what is starting to shape up here in WPM is something that looks like a head and shoulders type of formation. And I'm going to annotate this for you. So when we're talking about a head and shoulders formation, we're talking about something that has a resemblance, a resemblance, it's a rough resemblance, but you can notice it if you kind of step back from the screen a little bit. We're talking about a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. So it takes the resemblance of the silhouette of a human being. Can you see what I'm talking about here? Now, this is just one of dozens of patterns that appear in the financial markets over and over again. Um, that said, this is, generally speaking, a topping pattern. It indicates that a significant top has formed or may be forming, and we should pay attention to this. Now, notice, I'm not saying that I hope the precious metals will top. I'm not saying that I want the precious metals to top. In fact, I'm heavily invested, as are many of our clients here, uh, into the precious metal sector. But since we approach this from an independent standpoint, we like to look at what the actual data is showing us uh, because it, it is not beneficial over the long run to simply hide from what the actual market is showing. Um, and furthermore, if this is going to represent a top, we'll get into that in a few moments, uh, then there are defensive measures that we can take to protect ourselves from what could be a further significant decline in the precious metal sector coming up over the next year if this pattern is going to manifest. So you can see the pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. What does this pattern mean? The head and shoulders pattern, as I said, represents a distribution or a topping pattern, generally speaking. The way that we can calculate a target for the head and shoulders pattern is by taking an amplitude measurement of the highest part of the head formation above the support zone, which in this case is 21 points, and we can subtract that amplitude from the breakdown point. So the breakdown point would have been right here at 37, and we can subtract 21 from 37, giving us what? A target of 16. Now, first of all, let's just talk about the pattern as it appears. Let's, let's just talk about what this would imply, and then we'll look at some alternative scenarios. The pattern itself with an amplitude of 21, and we would expect this many people to now sell after the breakdown, 
giving a target of 16, which is off the chart. And for that matter, I will point out to you that it is below the low from the coronavirus crash last May. Remember that? So WPM during the coronavirus crash, it, it looks insignificant now, but fell from, what was this, 34 down to 20 in just a few weeks, right? And remember that this corresponded with silver falling to $11 per ounce in the spot market. Yes, of course, physical metal had quite a premium, but if you were willing to stand for 1,000 ounce bars, you could have bought silver for $11 per ounce. Uh, and taken delivery of that from the COMEX, yes, you could have. So remember, WPM fell to this level, which corresponded with $11 per ounce silver and $14.50 gold. And what we're saying here is that the expectation for this head and shoulders top pattern has a target which is below that. It's below the coronavirus panic bottom. So if WPM, which is a sector leading streaming company, and by the way, they stream both gold and silver, they're almost evenly split between gold and silver. So WPM is highly representative of the sum of the expectations in both the gold and silver mining world. If WPM is going to fall below its coronavirus panic low, which is what this pattern suggests that it will, then what would that mean for gold and silver prices? That would mean silver falling back below $11 per ounce and gold falling below 1450 which is where they both bottomed back last March during the coronavirus. So I want to get rid of that arrow for a second so we can focus more on the pattern here. That is what this pattern suggests when viewed in isolation. When you view just the head and shoulders formation, it suggests that WPM is going to be falling significantly here. Uh, and then what does that mean for the prices of the metals themselves? Now, wait just one moment. Notice this red shading right here for your attention. Notice how WPM broke down, but then recovered the support and is now coming back into the support zone once again, this zone shown by the black double horizontal lines. This looks a lot like a false breakdown. Now, a false breakdown is exactly that. It's when you have a, a pattern that has the bias. You see the breakdown, but then the market negates that very quickly by closing back above the support. Now, a false breakdown is actually one of the most, uh, sets up one of the most bullish outcomes that you can ask for. Basically, when you have a false move in one direction, it's, it's quite often that you'll have a significant move in the opposite direction after that. So keep this in mind, we already saw the look of a false breakdown here. Uh, pretty clear support line to observe that was recovered. So in the scenario of a false breakdown, we would expect WPM not to collapse toward the target, but we would expect WPM to do something like this, to have an impulsive move over the next couple of months back above the former peak from last August. And then once again, if a sector leader is going to have a move above its former all-time high, what would that imply for gold? What would that imply for silver? Certainly it would imply gold above last year's peak of $2,074. And it would imply silver certainly well into the 30s per ounce, right? So uh, here we are right now back at the support. Uh, this is a critical, absolutely mission critical time to be following the price action in WPM. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you are investing in the gold and silver mining world, following what happens here over the next four to eight weeks is mission critical. We're talking, is this the bull market in precious metals or not uh, from this signal? If you ask me, would I put 100% of my chips 
on any one signal? No, of course not. But this sector leader has a huge, huge impact on what is going to happen to not only the rest of the gold mining world, silver mining world, but the prices of the physical metals themselves as that forward looking indicator. So what happens right here? Super important to monitor. Aha, to make things even more complex for you, as if this wasn't enough here, what happens at the support line? There is one other type of pattern that is emerging right now. And by the way, this was actually uh, first pointed out to me by one of our subscribers. So uh, I appreciate you writing in that. Every once in a while, I can overlook one of the alternative scenarios that is happening here. And in that case, it is something like this. You can notice that these highs are coming down here on the head and the right shoulder, right? Lower and lower and lower and lower and lower highs. You can also notice that the lows are coming down, but at a lesser slope, a less steep slope for the lows. So what's shaping up here simultaneously with this head and shoulders pattern is a terminal wedge pattern. Okay, and a terminal wedge, the reason why we call it a wedge, well, you can see why it's called a wedge. It has the shape of a wedge. Terminal, because they tend to be ending patterns. They tend to be the last part of a correction that will look something more like this over the course of the next six months or so before the terminal nature of this pattern resolves what? Upward, because it's a terminal corrective pattern and it resolves in the opposite direction of the pattern. So guys, what happens here to WPM as a leading indicator for the entire precious metals complex is so important. And I'm talking just over the next four to eight weeks here, basically in this time period, as this support is being tested here in black. And as we see whether or not we're going to get the upward reversal from the false breakdown or whether or not we're going to grind and grind and grind. And let's say this correction wants to take an entire year to play out, August through August or something like that. Can we imagine that? Um, which one of these scenarios plays out is going to impact what we do here as far as our investments in our service goes? You know, Do we get a lot more aggressive now? Or do we take some defensive actions, but let's say just modest defensive actions um, as this pattern works into the terminal wedge? These are the two highly favored outcomes. And I would say the terminal wedge is going to be the more challenging one for most people because it will frustrate a lot of people. Um, it will frustrate people more with uh, the time that it takes and just the grinding, grinding, grinding nature, it'll kind of just frustrate a lot of people here right before the big move happens. So we're watching out these two examples for your attention are our favorite outcomes based on the two patterns that are showing here based on the false breakdown. I would say with a, a third least likely scenario that we get the fulfillment of the head and shoulders pattern, which would be talking about this target below the coronavirus panic. And in that case, you know, for example, if, if that worst case scenario were to occur uh, with WPM falling down here to 16, that would be talking about just an outright collapse in the precious metals, you know, silver down to $10 an ounce, gold back down to 1400, something like that. What would be the fundamental backdrop for a collapse like that? Perhaps just irrational selling due to rising interest rates. You know, we've seen that over the last several months. Maybe a lot of people panic out of their positions and sell all their precious metals. Uh, maybe the bullion banks come in and short a lot of contracts due to rising interest rates. It would be something like that. Uh, again, I'm putting that as the least likely scenario now that we've seen that false breakdown. And with one of these, either the terminal wedge or the springboard higher effect, now coming into play and which one happening being a key determination for what sort of protective measures you should consider as an investor. There are plenty of defensive measures if you're highly exposed to the sector that you should consider. You know, for example, we can talk about selling 
um, some of your mining holdings, not all of them, but we could talk about locking in some profits or cutting some of your losses before they get too large. We could talk about going into inverse ETFs where you would be profiting as the precious metals, let's say, decline over the next several months. Um, we could talk about put options. We could talk about a number of different things. And if you're in the physical metals, perhaps this just means that you're holding off. Maybe you're waiting to see if these patterns fulfill because there may be better prices over the next few months ahead. You know, waiting can also be a defensive strategy. So I want you to watch the price action in wheat and precious metals very closely over the next four to eight weeks because this absolutely mission critical signal is right there in front of our eyes. You can see it just as well as I can see it. Uh, and that is about the sector leader of the precious metals world. If you would like to follow all of this with us, we will be following wheat and precious metals and many other signals such as this to help us shape up over the next several weeks for what is coming throughout the rest of this year, you may join us in the service called Precious Metals Intelligence. We publish weekly videos such as what you're seeing, but we cover much, much more than you're seeing in this video. So we will be updating the WPM signal. We also update gold itself, silver itself, the US dollar, the US stock market, the commodity complex, so that you have situational awareness for everything that is happening in the precious metals world. We also cover the exact gold and silver miners that not only we're buying, but also that we're selling. We just took profits on one of our positions this week. That is one of those defensive measures that I was talking about taking. So you might wanna consider that. Think about how much you might gain or lose if you let some of your profits evaporate here compared to what the price of a subscription would be for some guidance in this sector. We publish simply the exact decisions that we are making here so that you can make a better informed uh, decision for yourself. That is the name of our business. We do not take any funds or fees from anyone else, any, any companies or any uh, of the ETFs, for example, that we invest in. This service is dedicated to assisting individual investors to be better informed. If you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, Christopher Aaron, please know that you can reach me. I do consultations from absolute beginners to people who are managing multi-million dollar portfolios. Uh, so there is nothing too small or too big that we can't handle here. And we sit down, we book either half an hour or an hour, we talk about your situation, I gather some data, and I give you a what would I do in your scenario type of analysis depending on those particulars. So know that you can reach me. I wanna thank you for supporting the free videos on Patreon. For those people who are doing that, there is a link to that below. If you would like to be one of our supporters, once again, make sure to hit the big red subscribe button and do not let that WPM chart out of your sight over the next four to eight weeks, guys. Mission critical, follow it, be better informed. See you soon.